Hey guys, it's your boy MJ Seabolt Matthew Dykstra, and it's uh, 20 to 4 in the morning. And I haven't slept again. My last video was on that. I have a few videos on sleep and not being able to do anything. Well, here's the secret. If you saw my very first series, Vlogging is Never Enough or Vine, I did a video on chronic fatigue syndrome and how it affected me then. Well, that video has since been taken off YouTube because I was learning about copyrights and I used a small snippet from a Lady Gaga uh, uh, song and I've since moved it to my website and uh, you can find it there. I'll even link to it below. But I want to be serious. I want to talk to you about what CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as ME, um, and how it affects me. But first, let's watch a video from Australia, from the feed, what CFS and slash ME is. Chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis or ME-CFS, can affect a range of functions in the body from the nervous system to the immune system. It's estimated that around 200,000 Australians have CFS, a quarter of those are housebound or bedbound. Currently, there's no diagnostic test and no cure for CFS, and it's a condition that has long been surrounded by controversy. Historically, a lot of people would think that it was in the patient's mind that life had overwhelmed them, they've taken to their bed and then they've just got scared by the outside world. Someone says, oh, what's wrong? I have chronic fatigue syndrome. Oh, I get tired too. I get tired too. Oh, you should try having kids, they say. Well, it is not in the same ballpark. Patients don't experience fatigue. What they experience is actually like a kind of a paralytic exhaustion, like they barely can move. Living. Now, if you haven't realized, I'm tired. Have I slept? No. Why haven't I slept? I don't know. I've been lying in bed in the dark. Well, I shouldn't say the dark. With, the, with some videos on. If those videos ever turn off in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping with whatever sleep I get, I tend to have nightmares, severe nightmares where I wake up sweating, even though I'm sleeping with a fan on in the middle of winter and the window open. So I get up, I go to the bathroom, I come back, I put some videos on, my mind settles. And as I'm trying to sleep, I'm visualizing the show in my head because half the time I've seen these videos over and over again. Scrubs, House, Grey's Anatomy, Ugly Betty, you name it, Blue Bloods, Corner Gas for you Canadians. But it affects me severely. Now, the people in the video from the feed, which I will also link below along with a Canadian video, on the research going on in Montreal, they're very severe. I mean, one lady in the video had to be lifted into a wheelchair. Another lady is in a wheelchair. But for me personally, my story goes like this. There are days when I was living in Oshawa before my sister moved to Alberta, where I would get so dizzy, and I mean extremely dizzy. The room would spin, my legs would feel numb, and I attributed that to low blood sugar. I attributed that to I have to eat something or I'm in trouble. So I find anything that's in the house and I just chow down. But I'm stuck on the couch for a while or at my desk and I'm either watching a TV show, a YouTube video. I try to edit 
for my channel. And if I sit for a while and really focus on one item, the dizziness and everything will stop. But afterwards, I'm tired, I'm worn out. I'm done and I just want to lie down. Now, half the time, I was good. My nieces kept me active. Um, I didn't worry about something to do because I was either, I had tons of editing. I was babysitting Lily and Ivy. I was taking, you know, them to the park. I was active. I even, in the mornings, would get up early, walk all the way to the Oshawa Center from Park Road, Walk the Oshawa Center, the original center, twice before they added that piece. And then I would walk that plus the old thing twice. And then I'd either stay for a coffee, because Tim Hortons was open early. And you may call me a mall walker, but that was the best exercise I could do for myself. And I was 35, 36 years old, you know, and I was taking care of my nieces. Then I moved to Whitby and thank God I got this apartment. This is the best apartment I've ever had. But here's the thing. Since my nieces have left, Serena is keeping me pretty active. It takes two buses and almost an hour and a half to go to her. And I'm standing for long periods, depending on if it's a weekday, a weekend, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing something. Then Serena and I, we get active, we play cards, we watch TV, we do a bunch of things. But when I get home, I'm extremely, not just normally worn out, you know, you spent the day with a friend, you're worn out. And you need time to recharge. No, I am extremely worn out. Extremely. Extremely. Well, first I take the dog out. And because she's 11 years old and her bladder's not so good, I wash the floor. So I've exerted more energy. I then get my snowsuit on because it's winter right now. And anything uh, below plus two feels like minus whatever with the wind. Snowsuit. Get all that on. And my new snow pants are really long. I need to get them, like, taken down. Because they go up to here on me. So I get all that on. I stroll with the dog, because she's not walking very well right now. So I stroll with the dog. Sometimes we take the elevator. Sometimes we go down the stairs. Now, going down the stairs is not the issue. Now, I've always hated stairs. From a kid onward, I've always hated the stairs. Well, now I go up the stairs with Foxy, and lately I've had to carry her. But even before that, when she could walk the stairs, I would get winded. And I mean, like I'm 40 years old. A 40-year-old man should not get winded going up the stairs. And he should not be feeling dizzy by the time he reaches the first landing of the two levels. So Foxy and I look out the window for a minute or two on the second floor. And then we go up the stairs to my apartment on the third floor. While I'm winded as all hell, I'm now at this point very tired. I'm dizzy. And I basically, and I, I attribute this to the apartment, I'm sweaty. So I, I take my snowsuit off. I deal with the dog, and I sit in this chair where I am now, back at the computer, watching either a video or whatever, you know, YouTube, try and edit, but I am tired and dizzy. And this has been happening more and more and more. Now, as of this video, February 2nd, at 20 to 4 in the morning, or, sorry, quarter to four in the morning, um, I, for a week and a half, had constant, and I mean, I have constant pain from fibro, but, and here's the but, 
but it's been double the usual chronic pain. Now I attributed that to the flu and because it's gone on for a week and a half, I'm absolutely wondering if it's something else going on. Maybe it's my chronic fatigue syndrome. Now I went to bed at a decent hour, a normal decent hour, not my decent hour, 10 o'clock. Cause I gotta be tomorrow with my dad and I'm in bed. I lied in bed till 3.30 in the morning. Now I'm in pain from just lying in bed. I mean lying in bed, not sitting up with my computer or whatever, lying down flat. I mean, even my dog lied with me for a bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, here I am up at 3.30 in the morning. I'm in pain. I'm extremely dizzy, so I went and grabbed something out of the fridge that I had stored away, thinking, again, my head's thinking it's maybe low blood sugar, because I have a tendency to look for something to eat every about every hour and a half to two hours, and I ate. That was now about a half hour, 20 minutes, half hour ago. And I am extremely, and I mean extremely done. I'm dizzy. The room is not spinning like it was earlier, but I've got tinglys all over my body. I'm hot as hell. And that's besides my stunning good looks. I'm afraid if I get up and make another coffee in my favorite mug, thank you, Dolly, that I may fall over, which has happened before. Now, you know the feeling when you get up too fast and you almost fall over? I get that from just getting up. So anyway, I don't wanna ramble on, but that's my disability. That's what I deal with constantly. And since my late 30s, it's been getting worse. And I don't know what to do about it. And according to these two videos, which I'll link below, there is no known cure for fibromyalgia or um, ME, sorry, um, chronic fatigue syndrome and ME. And my doctor too, he's just treating symptoms. He is just completely treating symptoms because there's nothing more he can do. So, that is how fibro, sorry, chronic fatigue syndrome affects me. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I haven't uh, gone on too long as this is the first video I'm doing that's gonna be a series of serious videos to let you know more about me. And we will stay positive and we will catch you on the flip side. Mm-hmm. <laughs>